Welcome everyone. Uh, I thought I'd make this, get it cracking into this video. Um, I don't know if you saw my Facebook post, but uh, I worked out a really cool way to turn any cancellations we have into downsells. My name is Martin Towers. I'm a long time ago high level user um, here in New Zealand and I really dig, really like automation and, and trying to tinker with things and working out what cool things you can do. So I put this post in the, in the Go High Level community and a bunch of you guys wanted to see how I do it. So wanted to make a video about it and here it is. So essentially what we do is we turn cancellations into downsells, all right? So we sell SaaS uh, and, and it's a true sort of SaaS product. We don't really do sales calls. It's just people sign up with the software online. Once they get into the software, if they want to cancel within their, within their seven day trial, uh, we remove the friction uh, and allow them to cancel within the platform. However, what we do is we then put them into a funnel. Okay, so I'll show you how this works. I'll show you how I built it during during this video. Uh, if you like the video, guys, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe and jump into the bottom into the comments and ask me any questions you want. I'm happy to help. So I have a button in within the Go High Level platform that looks like this that says basically down here, manage my plan. Okay, so when they click manage my plan and during the onboarding process, they get shown this as well. So manage my plan and they basically get two options. They can either upgrade here uh, and, and upgrade is basically just buying for three, six or 12 months in bulk and getting discounts. We'll cover that in a different video. But if they choose to cancel, cancel, they get two options in the next page. They can either claim a 20% discount for uh, 12 months, you know, uh, and I don't do it for life, I do 12 months only, so they get 20% off for 12 months. Uh, and if they decide to go ahead and claim that, then it updates Stripe uh, and updates their, their, um, their subscription in Stripe and emails them to confirm the discount. Uh, and then if they, but if they don't want to claim the 20% discount, uh, no, I don't want 20% off for 12 months, cancel my account. It then gives them another offer of what about 40% off uh, and again, update Stripe, emails a client. And then if they don't want that as well, then they can, no, I don't want 40% off, cancel my, my account for real. Uh, and if they choose to do that, then it cancels their Stripe for real and emails them to confirm. And I'll show you what that looks like. Um, <clears throat> where are we? There we go. So this is the page, manage my plan. Uh, you know, if they want to upgrade, again, I'll do that in a different video. Cancel, <clears throat> warnings, cancel the account, make it real nice and simple. Yes, are you sure? And then they get offered for 20% off, right? So again, if they claim the 20% off, uh, it'll take them to a pop-up. It just goes confirm. And then straight away, it executes uh, the right uh, the right flow, which I'll show you, show you that later. It'll just take you straight to a thank you page. Uh, but for this one, I'll, I'll, I'll say no for now. And then warnings last chance, 40% off for 12 months, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then if they say no, it'll take them to where it said, so you go before leaving, uh, you know, tell us why you're cancelling, etc. And they'll just give them some feedback. Uh, it'll fill in their address automatically, and then they'll cancel, and it would they could then go and find them in Stripe and cancel their subscription. So if we come back to this and say yes, they did want to take advantage of that, claim forty percent off. It'll take them to a thank you page. Okay, so I'm not going to click that right now because it's going to mess with all of my automations. But here I'm going to show you how I did all of that. Okay, so to start off with, what you need is a funnel. Right, so I've just got the simple funnel here. These are the pages we just saw, right? So manage my account. Uh, you can see it there. 20% <clears throat> off offer is there. 40% off offer is there. And then that final cancellation page is that one. And then this was the thank you page uh, that I was talking about. So the, my thank you page is really simple. Just great, welcome back. We've applied your discount. You get an email confirmation soon. So that's what happens there. And then again, I'll talk about the upgrades in another video. So in order to complete all of that, uh, what we have, what we, what, what I did was I built a bunch of forms uh, and a bunch of automations. Okay, so to start off with, let's say for example they take the um, uh, manage my account and they click on the cancel my account form. Right, so that is this first one here. So uh, cancel number one uh, goes yes, I'm sure. So so again coming back to that. Uh, to that process, they click on the cancel button and the pop-up would come up, right? And that pop-up would then have all of these fields would be pre-filled in automatically uh, because they're hidden, but I'll show you how I pre-filled them in automatically. So we grab their email, the name of the account, the Stripe, uh, the Stripe customer ID and the account location ID. And then they say, but all they see is, yes, I'm sure, because these are all hidden, right? And then 
Uh, if they go ahead and click that, then they get taken to, again, this first page. Uh, and then you got these two forms here, right? So um, here you got, uh, again, it's, it's real similar. It's the, the cancel number two. Uh, and this one is, no, I don't want my 20% off, cancel my account, right? So that's the, uh, that's the form on this page. No, I don't want 20% off. If they did want to take the 20% off, then they would get this form here. Uh, again, same form, but just different buttons, right? Different, and I've obviously you got to name them to make sure that you get the right names. Claim 20% off. Now, the key with all these forms, guys, is to make sure that sticky contact is on, okay? So just make sure you keep sticky contact on and all of this will work, all right? Um, coming back again, and then you got cancel two, cancel three, cancel four, and cancel four is the final one. So if they fill out, this is the survey where they get to give you the options of why they're canceling. Uh, and then we get them to, again, confirm the email address that's in. Uh, and then, obviously, again, you'll see the 40% off form is there as well, just as you saw, claim the 40% off, okay? Cool, so those are the forms, all right? You've got to have them set up in that way. So you want a 20% off form, a 40% off form, and then cancel one, two, three, and four, uh, all, uh, all in there, and obviously, you want to use the language similar to what I've done, right? So. When they, when they hit the first couple of cancel forms, they don't realize that they're still going to have a few steps to go. And then the final cancel form is the final one. Okay, this is the last step, etc. So once you've got all of that set up, now we've got to make sure that we trigger these automations. Okay, so I've got them in here. Uh, we'll come into, you've either got cancellations or up or down sales, right? So we'll talk about, let's talk about the cancellations first. Again, so this is cancellation. So if they, this is if they fill in that last form, the number four, they're definitely cancelling, um, then they'll hit the webhook, all right? And then that webhook uh, will be this one here, okay? So this one here in Make. So this, uh, Make.com, if you're not familiar, it's an integration system similar to Zapier. It used to be called Integromat. Uh, I like, I use Zapier and I use Integromat, just depending on what I'm doing uh, and what I like to do. Um, I'm slowly moving more and more towards make.com just a little bit more advanced but there are some limitations in make.com as well anyway each to your own but you could do this in zapier too so you hit a webhook now you have to find the customer in stripe okay so you have to find the customer in stripe and the way to do that is to with that webhook you have to send the, the stripe customer id okay now the way that i do that um, is actually quite interesting if you come in here to come in here to one of my clients accounts so if we go in here to, uh, let's go to, we'll come in here to someone who's already cancelled so we don't mess up with anything. So Amy, for example, right? Uh, there we go. Cool. So come in here to settings and down here to custom values, right? So I have her customer value, custom, sorry, Stripe customer ID listed as a custom value uh, in her Stripe, in, in her, you know, um, sub account. So that's really important. And you can do that with a really simple, um, again, another make.com or Zapier flow. When someone uses a two-way checkout form to purchase your, your you know, uh, your SaaS product, um, either on a trial or whatever, it executes that in Stripe and then you search the customer in Stripe by the email, grab the custom field and then update their location and put in that custom value. If you want to know a video about how I do that, let me know. I'm happy to make a video on how I do that. So that, that fills in automatically when the account gets created. On top of that, right, um, it then goes back and also fills in on the customer, on the contact within my, within my sub account, right? Amy, open her up, and it plugs in her Stripe customer ID here as well, right? So I've got the customer ID attached to her sub account, and I've got the customer ID attached to the contact in my sub account. So that way, when she goes ahead and where is she, Amy, right? When she goes ahead and clicks on this manage my plan, okay, you can see I will go to the location. If you go to the custom menu link, when she goes ahead and clicks, clicks on the custom menu link that I've got, you can see that that's the funnel, right? And then the Stripe customer ID fills in from the custom value that she's got, right? 
And then it fills in her email for the user email that she's using. Uh, and then the account, lo the location ID, all right? And then the account name, okay? So actually in the end, all I actually really needed with this was the custom, so was the Stripe customer ID. You don't actually need the rest of it, but I put in extras just to make sure in case I ever have problems down the road, there's extra data that's going through it. So then I can make maybe filters and make other flows to maybe match it or whatever. And like, you can't find the customer ID, then search the email, these sorts of things. But ultimately, the cu Stripe customer ID was the only thing I really needed. But that's the that, that that's how I do it. So I hope that makes sense. So Amy, in her link, she clicks on the link. Her customer ID, her Stripe customer ID is already saved in her sub account. And then it's already saved as well to her contact as well. So she's filling in a form and it's sticky and all of that, right? So when that webhook executes in make.com, it's got the custom, uh, the, the Stripe customer ID, right? To search my Stripe account, okay? So it searches my Stripe account for the customer ID. And then I've got a simple filter here. Basically, um, you know, if it's a SaaS customer, uh, you know, this is simply like what subscription is she subscribed to? Uh, is it one of these products, okay? So within your Stripe account, you can search your agency level products um, that you're doing, so you know your your SaaS products, and find these product ID numbers, and and you just want to use a simple filter to go. If it is one of these products, then we continue on these steps. If it's not one of these products, maybe it's because it, for me, I have customers in there that aren't on my SaaS product, but they still get the button for manage my account. So if they click it, then it'll send me an email saying this person's clicked this button, um, you know, and then it'll just prompt, prompt me to reach out to them. Anyway. So if it is one of my SaaS customers, um, it then executes this next step, okay? So this basically is, uh, you can grab this from the Stripe API documents, um, or if you wanna pause this video and, and copy it down. So you wanna take this link, and then you wanna use this step to find the subscription ID, right? From your Stripe, uh, from the, the, so we searched Stripe for the customer here, and it returned all of this data. So it's the number two, sorry, number two is the second step. And then you look down for, or you can just type it in up top. Um, obviously, I've already got it there, but I'll just find it. Subscription ID. So if you can't find it, just subscription, right? Subscriptions. There it is. Data ID, right? So you just click that, and then that goes on to the end of that URL there, okay? So, and then your method that you're using is, is delete. Now, authorization, uh, and you obviously want to have the word bearer followed by a space, and then your Stripe uh, API key. Okay, obviously mine's blurred out here, um, but if you wanted to find yours, it's quite simple. Uh, you just go to, you can just go into your Stripe and go API key, uh, right, developers API key. Uh, and you'll see there, I can reveal the live key, copy it, and then put it into uh, that flow just as so, okay? Don't worry about anything else, press okay. Uh, and now then you want to test that as well, make sure that's working. Then what I do as well is I have all my customers in Airtable. I have an Airtable database. Um, you may or not may, may not want to do that, but um, I have them there so that it'll search them and find that person in Airtable. It'll update them in Airtable. Basically, it's an easy way for me to look at all of my customers at once and go, this person's active, this one's not, this one canceled, this one's on a discount. You know, it, it just does all of that for me. It then also creates um, a Trello card for me, just like a to-do list uh, to make sure that I, and, and really that's just a double check for me to go, just double check that it worked properly, make sure that we're not charging them anymore, make sure the email went out to them, et cetera, right? And then this last step here is a high level update of contact, okay? So this is quite simple. It's just, it grabs the contact ID because the contact ID came through on the first step with the webhook uh, and it grabs the contact ID and all the step is doing is updating a tag to the customer. Now, it just says diamond canceled and then within Go High Level, I have an automation that runs, where's the best way for me to find it? Here we go, so this is my cancellation folder. We just looked at that first one that executes the webhook. And then you have this one, when that tag is added, it then removes them from all other workflows. It updates the contact field with something, I'm not sure, doesn't really matter. Uh, it revokes the membership offers. It sends me a notification letting me know. Then it emails the client basically saying, look, we're sorry to see you go. Is there anything we can improve on? Let us know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then it also texts the client to confirm that as well. So 
the only thing to be aware of with that, so that all works perfectly, that's on cancellation, all right? The only thing to be aware of with that, guys, is that using this update a contact step in high level in make.com, whatever tags that you click in here, this step will remove all the tags for the customer and it will only tag the ones that you have ticked, okay? So this is a problem. It's not the best solution. Um, I don't quite mind it for various reasons because I've got my stuff under control, but just be aware of that. That Zapier doesn't do that. So you might want to send this flow to Zapier or you might want to build this in Zapier for you. But I've talked to, I've spoken to high level about this, high level support. I don't, I, might, I, can't, I kind of didn't get a very firm answer of whether they're going to fix it or not, but they are aware of it. Um, and if they still don't fix it and after a while, I might escalate to Sean or whatever. But just be aware, whatever you took here, those are going to be all the tags that they have. So if this step gets executed for me, they'll, all tags will be removed and only the one that I tick here will be on that customer. So just be aware of that, okay? Cool. So that's the cancellation side, all right? So we've looked at this funnel here. And that's what I've just explained. So this person's gone, manage my account. They want to cancel. They don't want a discount. They don't want another discount. And then they cancel in Stripe. And then they uh, email the confirmation to the client, right? So I haven't showed you how these ones work. Okay, so um, we'll get straight into that right now. So I'm trying to get, I'm talking fast because I'm trying to get through this quickly because if you're anything like me, you're trying to learn something new. Uh, you know, there's nothing worse than watching a 30 minute or 40 minute YouTube video. So I'm trying to get through this quickly. I'm more than happy to help if you comment in the comments or, uh, you know, message me on Facebook. I'm, I'm more than happy to help if you want to know more, if you want me to expand on anything. So let's go ahead and do these upgrade steps, right? So same thing we were talking about before. They've got these upgrades. So if they didn't, uh, you know, if they got one of these forms, uh, you know, we have, they have their own triggers uh, within, uh, within high level. So let's just find my automations here. And where are they? Up or down sales? Uh, there we go. Up, a diamond upgrades. Client chooses to down sell. I call it upgrades. It's, it's upgrades is the wrong word. So it's this one here, right? So basically, this is if they submitted either of those two forms. So that Z40 uh, or the Z20. You see those, right? So they submitted either of those two forms. Then I have a condition, right? With which form they submitted. The condition is quite simple. Is which trigger did they use? So if they if they submitted. The twenty percent off form it executes this webhook, uh, and and then we just I just put custom data in here because you know you can put custom data in discount twenty right, and then if they submitted the other form the forty percent off, um, you know you discount forty. It's the same webhook, okay? It's just that the custom data is slightly different. So it's the same webhook, same flow in in make.com. Um, you know, in, in the world's the world's your oyster, you could do as many of these as you want, right? And and execute the same one and just have that different custom data in there. So once one of those forms is submitted, it executes one of those webhooks. Uh, so that is this one here, right? So Diamond leads client down sales instead of canceling via the custom menu link. So the webhook gets executed, uh, and as it gets executed, one of that custom data comes in. Again, the same thing as before, it uses that custom. Uh, so the Stripe customer ID to find that customer in uh, in, 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 in Stripe. Uh, again, this is the same as before. If it's not one of my SaaS customers, if it's one of my eight other customers, it just flicks me an email. If it's a SaaS customer, it carries on. It goes ahead and finds that customer in my Airtable records. It creates a Trello board, uh, a Trello uh, you know card for me to double check on it later. And then we just got two simple router steps. So if it's the 20% discount simple, uh, if the custom data discount equals 20, uh, then it proceeds on to the HTTP request. So this, um, I, I realized in the in the cancellation flow I showed you before, I didn't explain what this was. So it's quite simple in make.com. You just go to, just search HTTP, whoops, HTTP uh, and that one, and you get a whole bunch of options. Just you, the, the, the basic, uh, make an, uh, no, make a basic authentication request. Just do that one. That's the one that I'm using, all right? And that's the, all the one that you need. So do that one, and then again, uh, it's the same thing. Uh, then you want to use this. Um, uh, the, I think I believe it's the same URL uh, again, followed by the subscription ID at the end. Now instead of delete, you want to do a post request. Okay, uh, again, type authorization with a capital A, bearer space along with your API key, 
uh, and then down here you want the body type to be this one so when you click on this menu application uh, encoded uh, and then the next step down here you want the uh, the fields you just want one key uh, lowercase coupon and then the coupon value so um, I'll um, let's just do that one more time I will come back to that coupon let's jump into my stripe uh, and let's set up a coupon so it's real simple just go just type up in, in, at the top type coupon uh, I hope I'm, hope you guys are following but I'm just I'm trying to go as quick as I can guys so um, so that you don't have to waste too much time on this video so 20% coupon right uh, it's one of these two coupons so it's real simple you just press new and and you fill out the details of whatever coupon that you want once you've worked out what coupon you want uh, you click on here and then uh, you know once you've added the coupon you know I set mine for forty percent off for twelve months, uh, and then you can go details, and then this ID here is what you want. So grab, copy that, come back to your make flow, and then you just paste that in there. Uh, this is the twenty percent one. That's why it was different. So click on that one. Uh, it's that coupon code, right? And then click OK, and you're good to go. So you've made the the, the request in Stripe. Uh, and what Stripe will do is it'll apply. Um, I had to, I played around with this a little bit. And, and at one point I was discounting everything for that client at 20%, but I didn't want that. I only wanted to discount the subscription for my SaaS, cards, the SaaS service. So if you just follow those steps that I just showed you like that, um, it will. that's what it will do, okay? Uh, and then uh, the next step again is going back to high level into my sub account and we're updating the same contact, the contact ID uh, with the tag, where is it? with the tag, um, there is, uh, I say either down sell 20 or down sell 40, okay? So one of those two, whether it's a 20% or the 40%, it tags them with one of those two tags. Now, once they get tagged back into high level, you guessed it, it's this one here, then they get, that, that, that tag comes in, uh, and then you've got the condition, whether it's the down sell 40 or the down sell 20, they get an email confirmation. We've applied your discount. It's for twelve months. Uh, would you? And, and here, like obviously, they've got they've gone to cancel and then decided to take a discount instead. So there's something they're not happy with the system about. So I just sort of ask them, is there anything you're happy with, uh, etc. And then I then text myself to let me know that they have taken advantage of one of those down sales. So this isn't foolproof. It's not perfect. One of the caveats, just to be aware of, guys. Let's say if this person, Amy has decided to take a discount at 40% and now she's on 40%. Um, if she decides to click this button again, this funnel is not gonna know that she's already got that discount. So it's not gonna apply the same one twice, but potentially she might be able to go and apply two coupons. So she apply the 40 and then the 20, right? The other caveat is if she goes and shares this information with someone else who might be using my service, potentially they get the advantage to do that as well. Um, so obviously we don't want to do that. I don't have it right now, but I do want to, I will be adding like some disclaimers or, uh, you know, some sort of checkbox that, you know, I understand that if I, you know, tell other customers about it, then I lose the, you know, the right to have this discount, something like that, you know? So, um, again, I hope that was helpful. If this was helpful, you know, my YouTube channel is not really anywhere where it should, you know, it's not huge at the moment, but you know, I'd appreciate it if you just give us a like and subscribe and comment down below. If there's anything you didn't understand, maybe I rushed through it too much. Maybe I went too fast. I'm more than happy to help you if um, you have questions or if you'd like me to elaborate, maybe I could do another video or whatever. So I hope that helps. Um, thanks for watching if you made it this far. And um, yeah, see you, next, see you in the next video.